We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm tired, Jared. To be You're honest. tired? I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. You're tired. tired? I'm tired. I tilled. Right. I, I tilled like a large portion of my backyard today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, the, the I, I don't even know, maybe like, wait, maybe like six feet by like 50 feet. I, those are guesses. Those are approximations. But that's a lot, it's a lot of tilling. Yeah, that is, Jared. That well, is. mine is, mine, it's my, probably more like five feet. And also there's some tree stumps in the way. So that avoided, but also area that not needed tilled, um, difficulty, but still less, uh, so maybe 200 square feet. Yeah. Maybe approximately. I wasn't measuring. Um, there's a lot though. I'm tired. I'm very tired. That's I, also, right. I also built or, uh, dug a big trench in my backyard, but that wasn't today. That was, that happened previous to today. Today was the tilling. Gotcha. Gotcha. We're Preparing for segue. WW3, huh? No, uh, uh, <laughs> World War III will not be trench warfare. <laughs> <laughs> that'll we're, be stick your to... that'll be stick your legs between your or stick your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye warfare. That's what World War III is. I was trying to find a segue into today's episode, but nah. I'm just I'm just not going to. Uh, so I, we're gonna actually, Kyle, I thought of one since you said that. I thought of the one, but it's too dark to say it. So just just keep going. All right. So we're going to review the 2022 draft here. Um, a lot of Buckeye names uh, this year. Uh, so let's 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 just jump right into it. Uh, didn't take too long for a pair of, or you could maybe say a trio of former Buckeyes, because that be that would be technically correct. A trio of Buckeyes selected earlier on in the first draft with. Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and Jamison Williams. 10, 11, and 12. Now, Jared, that happened yeah, yeah. before. That happened yep. before back in 2020. Yeah, the 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 two and a half. The the I don't even, it's like the three peat, but it's not really a three peat. It's like a duo and a half peat. Yeah. And that, that was Joe Burrow, Chase Young, and uh Jeff Okuda. So Kind of yep. like this year, another two and a half year. A two and a half, Pete. It's not a thing, but I, I said it. So we, we, we take it, we move forward. Uh, yeah, yeah so Garrett, it's amazing. Wilson, Garrett, Wilson, yeah, Garrett Wilson heading to the New York Jets, Chris Olave to the New Orleans Saints. Or are they still the New Orleans Buckeyes still? Aren't there still a lot of Buckeyes over there? Uh, yeah, uh, they, they picked up a few Notre Dame guys. Well, they all, uh, the New Orleans Saints also added Isaiah Pryor, who is another former Buckeye. Uh, I think I think he was post draft though. I don't think that was I don't think that was draft, but I think that was post draft. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Ganglands confirming what I'm saying. Um, yeah, God, we're almost like look it up Gangland. Look it up at this point. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Stealing um, my thunder. Well, I knew it too. It's just sometimes when the camera and the microphone are rolling, I always have to sort of edge it with a little bit of a, oh, I think that's what happened in case I'm wrong. You know? Uh, yeah. Okay. Fair, fair enough. Gangland. Uh, <laughs> pause phrasing. Yeah. I, I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, yeah. Kyle, how in the, the wide receiver room at Ohio state, like I, a, a year ago or, well, when did you, Jameson Williams was post spring or pre spring transfer last year? I don't remember, but um, it that that I wide receiver room it was post spring. Yeah, I thought it was Gangland post, says post. Yeah. Um, before <laughs> Jameson Williams transfers, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Jameson Williams, and then JSN, who will probably be. Uh, at least in the early, the super early, okay, everyone, the, that draft's over. Let's do another mock draft. Mox is the first wide receiver off the board this year. Next year. Next draft. Already being projected as the first wide receiver off the board next draft. How insane was that room? Insane. 
completely, completely insane. And the funny thing is, too, uh, I got to find, th there was a number of pictures going around, including this one. I know that our YouTube audience aren't going to see this just because of how Discord does pictures and all that, but... Yeah, yeah. Right there, there's a picture. Right there's a picture of Olave Wilson and Williams on the field together there, and yet, maybe the best one isn't even on there, and that's JSN possibly next year. <laughs> yeah, it, and 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 think about all the other, it, the the wide receiver room at Ohio State, absolutely insane. Because how is it that Ohio State can lose Jamison Williams last year, gonna lose? Now they've lost Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. And we're not even worried about it. <laughs> like when Olave and Wilson basically said, hey, guys, we're going to skip the Rose Bowl. A lot of us were like, yeah, that's probably that's probably a good idea. We want to see some of these young guys. Give some of these young guys a chance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Okay, like, OK, yeah, yeah. yeah. We want to see Fleming and Harrison. Like we, we want to see what some of these young guys can do. So it's 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 outright insane. The level of talent in the Ohio state wide receiver room over the past few years. And still, and still, like I said, when you lose the 10th and 11th guy and you're just like, okay, let's see the new guys. Not even worried about it. It's insane. It is. Yeah. We have at least yeah, two also... future hall of famers ready to play. I assume you mean college hall of famers. Cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going, I never go there with any college guy. <laughs> I never, never say any college guy's a pro football hall of famer, but maybe, but you never know. I mean, are you old enough to remember drawn Carter? <laughs> Chris. Yeah. Who? Uh, Chris Carter's son. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying like, you never know. We were ready to crown his ass. After 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 his freshman year, we were ready to crown his ass, and uh, th then he played in Canada for a while. <laughs> Oops, shit happens. Um, yeah. So Kyle, uh, outside of uh, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, um, maybe zoom out a bit here. Let's zoom out. Ohio State had in total. Uh, you have confidence on Heartline. And, and that's, that's fantastic. And you should have confidence in Heartline, but ultimately like the kid has to make decisions, right? Mm -hmm. Like Larry Johnson senior is one of the best to ever do it period ever. As far as position coaches go, like, and his 100% of his kids turned into NFL prospects. No, um, the, 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 the kid has to want to do it. The kid has to do the work. The kid has to put in the time in the gym, the time conditioning, the time in the weight room, the time on the field, the time with the film. Like, they have to want it. Here, here you go. This, this is it. This and by the way, I... and since we're talking about Deron Carter, the time in the classroom. Yeah. The time in the here's classroom. What I, here, here, here's what I was looking for. You can just you just put this all over the Woody Hayes here and be like, here, here, here's here's coming to Ohio State. This is this is what can happen, right? And this by the way, like, we can train you to be. People are always worried about like, oh, can Ohio State really like how how do how how do you keep bringing in wide receivers like oh but or and you can say this about a lot of positions, right? It's just like Ohio State brought in top defensive ends last year right after signing you know, the number one and number two best defensive ends in the country the year before. And they're like, well, how do you do that? Oh, I don't know. How's Bama been doing it for the last 10 plus years? This, you say, look, you come here, we'll teach you. We'll develop you to the best you can absolutely be. And if you still don't feel like you're getting field time, you can go to Alabama like Jamison Williams did and still get drafted in the first round. You can go to LSU like Joe Burrow did and still be drafted in the first round. You come here, you get developed, and if you and even if you aren't able to get on the field because there's a log jam of talent, 
then you can go somewhere else and take all you have learned and all we have taught you and still be excellent at another school that can compete for national titles. Yep. And carry their offense, essentially. Uh, yeah, Jamison Williams was a very important part of that Alabama offense, for sure. All right. Absolutely. Uh, to zoom out a tad, uh, Ohio State had six players drafted in this draft, which, Kyle, a pair, a pair of stats involving the number seven for you on this one. A pair of stats involving the number seven. All right. Uh, six players drafted. Tied Ohio State for seventh place uh, with uh, with with schools getting players drafted. So they were essentially tied for seventh place. Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's still it's a it's a good for <coughs> a little bit of a off year as far as Ohio State talent goes going into the NFL. Um, in and, fact, and I will I'll, I will warn everybody. I will warn everybody. You're going to hear a lot. From Cincinnati fans, based on the number that they've had drafted, which, which was, which was good for them. Good for them. They got, they had nine drafted this year from Cincinnati. Yep. Um, I'll just say that this, it wasn't necessarily like a lot as far as Ohio State's Ohio State's draft numbers will be insane next year, and then super insane. The 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 not. Not the 2023 draft, but the 2024 draft will be stupid. The 2024 I mean, the draft for Ohio State will be absolutely stupid, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Yeah. The other I mean, number the seven, past... the other number seven stat, Kyle, that I need to give you is this is the fewest. This is the quote unquote worst, just analyzing pure by the number of draft picks. And obviously it can go much deeper than that, but simply the number of draft picks, this is Ohio state's worst draft since 2015, which was seven drafts ago. Yeah. And, Those and are two seven. That's just, that, that's just crazy to think about the last couple of years, 10 recruits, 10 or recruits, <laughs> uh, 10 drafts, 10 drafts, nine, seven, seven, 12, which is that ridiculous 2016 year with, with what do we have? Like five first rounds in that one. And it could have been uh, like, I ha hold on. It I have it been... right here. Joey Bosa, Zeke, uh, Eli Apple, Tyler Decker, Darren Lee, uh, five first rounders. Yeah. And Michael Thomas easily could have been up there too, possibly, but could have been, should have yeah. been, uh, absolutely mm -hmm. should have been, um, there, there were wide receivers taken before Michael Thomas, who should not have been taken before Michael Thomas. Uh, Von Bell also proved himself, uh, worthy of first round pick, even though he went in the second. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he does. He Gangland, Gangland does, says, well, yeah. he makes first round money now. Uh huh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Other so other players who got uh, drafted here, Jared, uh, going to the third round and the 69th pick. Thank you, Gangland. Uh, is uh, Nicholas Petit Ferry going to the uh, Tennessee Titans? Yeah, uh, that's and a that that's a great pickup. Obviously, uh, that's. Sometimes you, you Kyle start to wonder how much of that Ohio State influence makes its way to Tennessee with Mike Vrabel in charge. There, there's, there's there's more to that. We'll we'll get we'll get into with Tennessee. Also in the third round, uh, Jeremy Ruckert heading heading to his his hometown. Well, it definitely yeah. his favorite football team, yeah, the yeah. New York Jets, joining Garrett Wilson. Yeah, joining Garrett Wilson. Uh, that's I think it's you know I think that's always nice right it's always nice where you have at least one familiar face there um so yeah Garrett Wilson Jeremy Ruckert both going uh to uh wow brain brain farted there for a second uh both going to the Jets uh Chris Olave speaking of Michael Thomas assuming Michael Thomas is still with the with the Saints you know they'll both be on the same team um as Kyle said you know talking about the New Orleans Buckeyes um and there's lots of Ohio State guys in and around the Tennessee program at this point. Uh, so that's obviously going to be nice for uh, Nicholas petit Um Yeah, Tyreek Smith uh, going to the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I think that's a great, I think that's a good landing spot for him. And Thayer Munford uh, going to the, uh, the Raiders. Uh, Kyle, I, I pulled this chart. I almost read it. 
Uh, hey, I, I pulled this chart from 11 Warriors. I just want to say that. want to say that. Pulled this chart from 11 Warriors. Um, they put Oakland Raiders in this chart. <laughs> they did it. Not me. Um, <laughs> Uh, Oops. Let's see. So, no worries. So let's see other. Let's see other things about the draft here. So talked about Tyree. Talked about Thayer Munford. Um, we talked about the Tennessee Titans picking up Nick, Nicholas Petit Fury. Also going to Titans as a um, undrafted free agent is Haskell Garrett. So you were talking about how much influence being the head coach. At, at Tennessee had some something to do with that too. But maybe, I mean, maybe potentially, not. maybe, maybe not. Um, Haskell mm-hmm. Garrett. I know a lot of, I saw a lot of people surprised. They expected Haskell Garrett to get picked. Uh, they were a little bit surprised to see him not picked. Um, I'll say that he has issues potentially transferring to the pro game. Um, I don't know if the like sort of raw strength is there for him to consistently play defensive tackle at the next level. Um, I would say that's probably the biggest issue for him. Like go, go read the scouting reports. Most of them will tell you the same thing. You know, his footwork's amazing. His hand works amazing. Uh, all, all of the technique stuff is amazing, but there's just a lot of questioning about just sort of, raw strength and raw um power what upper body lower body just sort of he doesn't play as big as he is if that makes sense um and i i wondered i always wondered and i don't i don't necessarily i'm not intimately familiar with the defense that the tennessee titans run i always i almost wonder if you'd make a better like three, four, specifically three, four defensive end in the NFL. Um, even at his size, um, there, there's a lot of Cam Hayward, I guess is what I'm saying. There's a lot of Cam Hayward in the way that Haskell Garrett plays. Um, I think, I think his style might be a little more finesse than the, the pros want out of a defensive tackle, even a three tech defensive tackle. But I I think there's still absolutely room for him as a rotational guy in the NFL. And as a, a a defensive tackle, you'd put in specifically in like third down situations, I I think would also be a, uh, a welcome addition, a welcome uh, addition to any roster. But like, I just, as far as him just being like a three absolute, First round, second round, or excuse me, first down, second down, third down, keep him on the field, defensive tackle. I just, I don't necessarily know if like the raw power is there. And at least, like I said, that's just for me reading a lot of the scouting reports and what people are saying about him. Yep. Yep. So Jared mentioned, those are the six players being drafted. Now there are, as well as Haskell Garrett being invited as a free agent to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, signed, that, yes, that, that's a very important distinction. He was it, signed it, it is, yes. and, to the Tennessee and the other, Titans. And the other, um, the other player who's signing on as a free agent as well is Master Teague. Yeah, joining um, joining a former teammate to Chicago Bears. I, 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 I don't know. I, I. It's almost to the point where I feel like I'm not even a defender, but I'm an apologist or or what, but. Master Teague is so much better. I think Master Teague is so much better than Ohio State fans give him credit for. Honestly, I, I think he is a tremendous running back. Um, I think a lot of people forget how important he was during the, the, the COVID season before Trey Sermon really took over. Because uh, Trey Sermon didn't take over until like late. I don't think Trey Sermon really had a huge impact until... I think it was Would the it be game the game before Michigan? Game before Michigan. I, I thought it was Michigan, um, but but mm-hmm. was it Michigan State? But it, Master Teague had 
huge, huge appearances and huge impacts. He didn't play Michigan that year. Oh, that's right. We didn't play Michigan that year. <laughs> wow. I erased that little nugget from my head. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, yeah. So I, I was thinking it was either the big 10 title game or the game before the big 10 title game that Trey Sermon really came on. Yep. yep. Um, and master Teague was the guy before that and had really good games before that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think Ohio state fans, uh, greatly underrate master Teague as far yeah, as just like a guy with speed and power. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like he has keep, a shot in Chicago. Definitely keep an eye out for him. Uh, other players who, um, notable players, uh, we have Antoine Jackson being invited to a rookie mini camp for the Giants. Yeah. As well as former um, walk on receiver Chris Booker heading on over to Arizona Cardinals and Jared just within the past few hours here. Our ninth year senior, <laughs> uh, Mario McCall, also heading to Chicago, but unsure if it's a free agent deal or a mini camp invite right now. Uh, my assumption would be a mini camp invite because most of the free agent deals are made relatively quickly, but I could be, I could be mistaken. Um, cause it's, it's, it's typically like the, the second that last pick is picked, it typically becomes just a complete scramble to, uh, get those last guys signed in the free agency. I think the draft should at least be eight rounds long personally. Um, but yeah, the, you want to talk, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to rag on the kid too hard, but like, you want to talk about a guy who potentially had all of the potential in the world in Antoine Jackson, um, went to Auburn, things didn't work out there, transferred to Ohio state things. You're going to talk about a guy who had the size, had all of the best coaching available to him and just, it just kind of never worked. Um, I, I don't know, I, and maybe there's legitimate reasons that I'm not aware of, but and I'm not going to say I know why that didn't work, but five-star guy, everyone wanted him out of high school, uh, had excellent defensive coaches. Was it Auburn? I want to say it was Auburn, where, uh, his first stop. Um, And then, you know, like I said, transfers to Ohio State, we had Larry Johnson senior and like, uh, you know, sort of everything available to him. And it, sometimes it just doesn't take for whatever yep. reason. And I, I'm not judging Antoine Jackson. Cause I don't know why it didn't take. So don't, don't take that as me being like negative towards him. Cause like I said, maybe there are legitimate reasons that I'm just not aware of, but um, yeah, exactly. They are humans. Um, I, this isn't me saying, oh, he didn't work hard enough or he wasn't this or he wasn't. I, I, cause I don't know. I don't know why it didn't work. Um, but he, he was a guy just, just saying, like I was saying before about Heartline and, you know, Larry Johnson senior, like it doesn't matter how good the coach is sometimes, sometimes it just simply doesn't work. Yep. Period. Uh, right, let's uh, see, uh, Kyle, uh, noteworthy. So if I, okay. So sometimes maybe it is about coaching. Let me just, so let me, let me just immediately contradict everything I just said. Sometimes maybe it is a bit about coaching five, five of Ohio state's six, 2022 20, picks came from the offense. Only one drafted defensive player from Ohio state. Uh, it's, uh, it's easy. It's easy to maybe point fingers at Ohio State's defensive struggles the past couple of years and say, well, you know, maybe that has something to do with it. Um, but at the same time, this was a very young defense. Like, we need to acknowledge that this was a very young defense. Um, if Ohio State's defense had a tremendous year last year, what changes? Like, maybe Zach Harrison's in this draft. If, the, if Ohio State's defense had a really good year, what changes as far as this? Uh, I, our Zoom crashed. 
Our Zoom crashed. I'm inviting Kyle back. Uh, that's me. I'm going to be in both windows here for a second. Hi, everyone. My face is very big in this window. And we're back. All right. Don't know what that was about. Um, where was I? Master Teague, Chris Booker, Antoine Jackson, Demario McCall. Oh, yeah, five. So, like, if Ohio State's defense had a excellent year this year, does that maybe get Haskell Garrett drafted? Is that one more guy in there? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, would Zach Harrison have left early and been in this draft? Maybe, maybe not. I, I always kind of, he always felt like a three year guy to me. So mm -hmm. maybe. Um, yeah, uh, Gangland, the the Zoom crashed. I don't know what that was about. <coughs> so. But but the Ohio State defense was, like I said, very, very young. So it's not – I don't think it's a huge indictment that there weren't a lot of drafted players out of the defense. But there, you know, there potentially could have been two more that I can think of right off the top of my head. Josh Proctor you – know, here, here's a thing that sort of works in, against both. If, like, Josh Proctor – doesn't get hurt maybe the defense is better and maybe he leaves early but he does get hurt you know you know then there's seven banks and there's some other guys that you know you ask what if what if what if who you mm -hmm. know seven banks was a guy you want to talk about you know too early draft projections you go find some like go go, go find some like Mock drafts. Go find some mock drafts from like this time one year ago, and they were putting seven banks first round, if not higher, top 15, top 10. Um, and he ends up barely playing and transferring to LSU. He did actually initially declare for the draft, but didn't sign with an agent and then said, Hey, I'm coming back, but sort of, I'm coming back going in the transfer portal. Um, there's a lot of questions in, in that arena. Uh, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of things, uh, not, not publicly, uh, known about what the hell has gone on with seven banks. I wish him all the best. I wish him, I, I hope he has an absolute, <laughs> you know, that's one of them gangland. Uh, the, but to, I, I hope he has an absolutely comeback, amazing year and, and kills it at LSU. Um, yep. But it's that, that's, that's been a whole peculiar situation for the past. I feel like all last season, Kyle, we kept saying, what the hell is going on with Harry Miller and seven banks? And like, there were also rumors about Harry Miller. And eventually we, one of those rumors uh, was confirmed by Harry Miller. Um, and, you know, we now have that story because that always felt weird. That always felt very weird. And the seven banks story also always felt very weird. Like stuff wasn't being talked about. And there are rumors out there and I'm not going to repeat any of them because I don't know if any of them are true um, or to what extent they are true, but the, the seven banks stuff is, is weird. And I hope he recovers and, and has a fantastic year in Baton Rouge. Yep. Yep. Um, do want to note here um, back in 2014, Ohio state had had the record of total picks Yep. Um, which was 14 and that, that was a another ridiculous um, uh, class that Ohio state had in the draft and Georgia, Georgia with their stellar defense that they had this last year ended up breaking the Ohio state's record with 15 picks. Yes. Uh, it should be noted that the LSU tigers coming off of a national title tied Ohio state's 2014 record. Uh, in 2020 by also getting 14 picks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Uh, we'll get it back. 
We'll get it back. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Keep, stay tuned. And I think Ohio State will have a really nice draft in 2023. But that 2024 draft, you stay tuned for that one. Yeah, no, absolutely. That that class that, that will be like a bunch of those guys becoming draft eligible. You know, we can start with Jack Sawyer and JTT, but it does not end with Jack Sawyer and JTT. Um, that class, when that class comes into, yeah, Travion, the wide receivers, absolutely. Um, I'd probably go ahead and throw Kyle McCord into that as well, Gangland. Um, that class. Uh, of course, Kyle McCord's not a part of that class, but he'll... He'll be a four-year guy instead of a, a three-year. No, he is a part of that class. No, he is a part of that class. Um, that Ohio State uh, will absolutely dominate. Will absolute. This is this is a stupid thing to say. This is so stupid and far off. And I was just telling us, I was just telling everyone about seven banks and how you can't project a draft that far out and blah, blah, blah. And I just said how you can't do that stuff. And now here I'm about to say one of the dumbest things I've ever said on this podcast. Ohio State's going to absolutely dominate the draft in 2024. Ohio State will dominate the draft in 2024. So mark mark that down, uh, gangland, at the uh, 3140 mark of this episode here. We could have a flurry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we could have a flurry in the top 10. What does flurry mean in this context? I feel feel like I'm missing something. Rapid, you know, rapid succession. Yeah, that, okay, I didn't, I don't know why, but that sounded a whole lot like a, um, I almost sounded like a gambling term or something, but, but legitimately like go look at the recruiting class. Um, was it, thank you gangland. Uh, go look at like the recruiting rankings for that draft class. Wasn't that the year? I know it was the year, but I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think if you look, I think it was the 24 seven sports proper rankings, not the composite, but Ohio state and Alabama had, was it like eight of the top 12 players or something insane like that? I'm going to look it up. Kyle, uh, talk about something else. <laughs> talk about something else. So I'm going to talk about some other things uh, outside of the um, the draft here, and that is the transfer portal. Uh, Ohio State got a transfer portal transfer of Parker Lewis, who is the uh, USC kicker who has announced his intention to transfer to Ohio State for next year. And it's looking like Parker Lewis is going to be doing um, place kicker duties this year, which is definitely a, something that a lot of Buckeye fans really wanted, getting a kicker who can just kick the ball out of the end zone. So you're thinking Parker Lewis is more kickoff duty? Yeah. Yeah, Ohio State's going to have three place kickers on scholarship? Does that does that feel odd to anyone else? It, yeah, it does. <laughs> remember, th- this was the kicker. None of them are uh, eligible to be redshirted, Gangland. I forget. I forget which. I guess anyone technically, if as long yeah. as they haven't used it. But I forget which game. I forget which game it was. But this was the same kicker. If you remember, Jared, from opening kickoff, he got disqualified for targeting. All right, he's my new. <laughs> God, why do we have the best kickers? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, that's that's what uh, Gangland. That's what Kyle was just saying. That they'll probably have him do a lot of the kickoffs. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll Gangland ask ask me to ask me to give you my real opinion on this one because uh, there are certain things we don't talk about on the show. I'll, I'll give you my real opinion on this one in the Sloop Cats only channel on the discord when we're done here I'll, I'll i'll give you my real opinion on that one and by the way if you want to join the discord discord.thesloopcast.com and if you want to be able to access specifically the sloopcats only channel within the discord patreon.thesloopcast.com uh 
I, there, there are things I will say in the discord that I won't say on the podcast. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. just reality. Sorry. And, um, the, the last, the last thing I have here, Jared, before we end the episode is Ohio state has another, uh, schedule change this time for the 2023 season where they, um, originally were going to play San Jose state. They will now play in state Youngstown state. By the way, uh, the 2021 class of the top 13 players. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. Six of the top 13 players committed to Ohio State. Uh, one, two, three, four of them committed to Alabama 10 of 13 committed to either Ohio state or Alabama of that of the 2021 class. And that's using the 24 seven sports proper their, their actual rankings, not the composite rankings. Um, that's insane. That is. Uh, it it sh really should absolutely be noted. However, that one of those players was Quinn Ewers who uh, is now at Texas. So, that should be said out loud. That that needs to be acknowledged. Um, and, and it also needs to be acknowledged that one of the Alabama's kid, one of the Alabama kids, his name's Kool-Aid. And that, that doesn't mean anything other than, than me just wanting to say that out loud. Um, oh, by, the, right. by the way, Jared, yeah. by the way, Andrew Lind confirmed from McCall himself saying that it it was to a rookie mini camp. Yeah. So right, I think I think that's it. I think that's all I have here, Jared. Uh I was I was hoping to see I really, really would love to have seen Haskell Garrett with all that he's gone through, the hard yeah, worker yeah. that he is, get drafted, but it's kind of that it's kind of that odd scenario. It's like, do you want to get drafted in the seventh round or kind of kind of have a your options as a free it's, agent. It's sort of like emotion versus logic. Logically, you want to pick the team. Get, you're going to get paid more money. Not that it's a lot more money, but you're going to get paid more money. You're going to get to pick your team. It's much better to go undrafted and choose your location than it is to get drafted in the seventh round. Mm -hmm. Logically speaking. Yep. Emotionally speaking, there's validation and noteworthiness of being drafted. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a status thing. It's an emotional thing. Um, it's a validation thing. Um, so I understand that logically, logically you want to be, you want to be drafted, even if it's as the seventh, the light, you know, the very last pick, but yeah, I, 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 I get both of those. I get both of those, but logically speaking, logically speaking, it is much, much better to not get drafted yeah. and yada, 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 than you know, get drafted in the seventh round. Yep. All right, Jared, that's it. You got anything else before we wrap it up? No, I think that's good. I think, uh, Kyle, I believe that we successfully recapped the draft. All right, awesome. Go ahead and let's go ahead and kick us off. Sure, sure. Uh, tonight's uh, kick us off, I believe, is the opposite of what we're doing right now. Yes. Okay. We are closing up. We're zipping up. Uh, we're inviting the fat lady to sing. Although I, the the. The, the person I have lined up to end the song um, or to end the music, the, the band I have lined up, uh, neither fat nor a lady. So I guess as far as that part goes, we failed. Sorry about that. I have failed you. Uh, tonight's ending band uh, will be 
uh, Brat Curse. They're from Columbus, Ohio. So uh, you can find their info down in the show notes if you want to listen to this song. Follow the band uh, on YouTube. Uh, download their stuff on Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you want to do. Uh, once again, the name of the band is Brat Curse from Columbus, Ohio. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local pod- podcasters. Once again, this is Brat Curse. Thank you.